So you guys know that I have made some crazy solo b-roll videos on this channel from doing things like putting the camera on a skateboard to get moving shots, throwing the camera in the air to get a weird top down or even using a zip line to introduce some sort of movement. We've done some pretty crazy shots. In today's video, I wanna share a few of the things I feel will be most helpful when you guys are trying to film all by yourself. I try to write down some having no friends jokes for this, but they all seem just really mean, so I'll leave them out. <laughs> today's video is sponsored by Millinotes, and I'll tell you guys how they can help when you guys are filming solo B-roll later on. I think it's really important when you guys are shooting solo videos to understand your limitations and your strengths so that you can play into them to get the best results. One of your strengths is gonna be the tools and the gear that you have at your disposable to make this solo B-roll. Disposal, disposal. The number one tool that you guys are gonna need is some sort of tripod. You can do almost all of the shots with just a basic tripod. I only have this little baby one right now, but I actually recommend a full size one because the limitations of this one is that I can only really get very low angle shots unless I can find something to put it up onto. So having a full size one means you can get those really nice low shots, but you can also get more like eye level shots looking down on things or looking at people's face. If I wanted to get a close up on my face, I wouldn't be able to do it with such a low one. So highly recommend a full size tripod and then some of the other things that you guys can use when you do want to take it to that next level is some sort of gimbal so you can enable the tracking and actually get some moving shots like that which you guys have seen us do before another way is to use a drone and again you can get the drone to track you can select your subject and introduce that nice movement into your shot even if it has you in it then you can obviously start doing some like crazy creative things like how we use the skateboard to get a moving shot or a zip line anything like that you guys can go as crazy as you want and figure out any sort of way that you want to break your I mean to film the shots of yourself not break your gear let's look at the settings that I like to use and recommend for exposure I like to shoot in manual so that I can make sure that I'm getting the right exposure for that scene it can be tricky when you're on your own because you can only really see the background and not yourself as the subject the light might be hitting different from something far away in the distance and the way that I like to get around this is by just putting my hand out in front of the lens and getting the exposure for my hand it's gonna be the same kind of uh, tone and brightness as my face and myself when I'm getting those shots of me so it works really well just look out for if there are different like shadows and pockets of light that when you are setting your exposure to make sure that your hand is in the same pocket of light that you're actually going to be in for the actual shot so don't have your hand in a shadow and then you're going to be out in the sun down there for focus, I like shooting in autofocus. I find it works almost every single time and shooting in manual is often limiting because if you want any shots where you're going to or from camera, the focus isn't gonna track you. It's gonna be locked to that one isolated little depth of field area. So there are specific times where I will switch it over into manual. If for example, I have some foreground in my shot and my camera might be jumping between like the background and that foreground, not really knowing where. Otherwise, if it's a shot that's like an extreme close up or a detail and I want the focus to be locked in that area and everything else to be out of focus, that is when I'll use manual as well. But for 99% of the time, autofocus, especially if you guys have a newer camera, it does an amazing job of tracking you and figuring out what you generally want in focus so I highly recommend just switching it over into auto and staying there almost all of the time unless you have a specific reason not to something super important is when you guys are heading out to shoot your solo b-roll it can sometimes be overwhelming because of how many different hats you're wearing you have to be the cinematographer the talent the 
produce it, you have to script the video, you gotta think about all these different things. And having a basic plan, an idea of what you actually want to film, and a rough idea of maybe some of the shots that you want to capture is gonna be so beneficial for when you're actually out there shooting. So plan it out a little bit, maybe block out your scenes just roughly. That's where the sponsor of today's video comes into play, which is Milanote. And whenever I'm going out to film something like this, I'll get a rough idea of what I want it. Milanote is an infinite canvas pretty much, and you can create different boards. So I can create one board for the shots that I want in my solo B-roll and just have a rough idea, like maybe one riding the scooter on a road, one arriving, one of me walking to the destination, and then one of me like kind of getting to that destination and payoff scene. I can throw different reference images into that board on Melanote, and I can also put other boards inside of that board so that I can go more in depth and then have checklists or anything that I've written down for shot ideas. Something that's great about Melanote is you can put in reference videos, you can put in images, documents, you can even draw on the canvas to make it easier to understand when you guys are out in the field and actually looking at what you need to achieve. So whenever I'm shooting videos, I guess, I'm gonna be looking at my phone to all of my references and things that I have like already planned so that I know I'm getting exactly what I need and want. If you guys wanna try out Millinote, it really is awesome for creators. You can do so many other things other than planning videos. You can like schedule your whole life and videos and everything on there, which is something that I do as well. They're gonna be linked in the top of the description, so go and check it out. The next thing is gonna be angles. And when you're filming solo B-roll, it's no different from when you were filming with someone else you're gonna have to get multiple angles of the same scene setting up your camera in different areas from behind from in front from next to you I like to pick my little mini tripod up and get some selfie shots looking back onto myself to show the face otherwise I can hold it down and get some shots of my feet walking from the front or back one of the biggest things that I like to do is introduce some movement into my shots because as you guys know when you're filming yourself everything is pretty much gonna be lock off and before before you actually shoot any shots of yourself, I like to get some nice big establishing shots to show the viewer where we are. But this is also a really good opportunity for me to introduce some movement into those shots because I'm not gonna be in the shots so I can film any establishing shots I want with nice movement. And then anytime I want a cutaway or something that hasn't got me in it later on in the video, I can also introduce some of that movement. Something important when you guys are doing your angles is to change your lenses and focal lengths. Don't film everything just on that widest lens. It's all gonna look very much the same. And sometimes by adding a long lens and getting like a really nice zoomed in shot, it completely changes the feeling of the video and like really adds to the whole experience and makes it feel not so much like it's just someone plonking the camera on the floor, like my phone just smashed itself on the floor. I don't think there's ever been a time for me that I've got back to the edits and been like, wow, I have way too many like awesome, shots for this and way too many like good angles so just try and shoot as many angles as you possibly can a lot of them aren't going to work or look as nice as you think they might because you're not going to be seeing the actual framing when it has you in them so just go crazy with the angles shoot way more than you think you need you're going to be super thankful later when you get back to the edit the next thing is going to be to review the shots that you're taking when you're filming by yourself there's no one that is going to be looking at the shot to make sure that the focus was right and it didn't focus on something random in the background maybe a cloud comes over and changes your exposure so just to review it and make sure that it worked the way that you wanted to is really important. You need a little bit of patience. It's gonna take longer to film videos by yourself because you're one person doing everything, but just reviewing it can make sure that you're getting the best shots possible. If you see that your framing is wrong, maybe you're in the side of the frame, you can just adjust slightly and redo it to make sure that you are really nailing them as best as you can. The last thing I wanna talk about is adding movement in post. And this is gonna be hugely beneficial to just make that video feel more like there was someone else there filming it for you and it wasn't just yourself. And basically it's really easy to do this by using keyframes in whatever editing software you guys have. And you can add punch ins or punch outs if you're filming in a higher resolution like 4K, you can even crop that whole image in and then do slides or move up and down. And that's gonna make it feel way more dynamic and nice for when the viewer is actually watching it. It's not gonna feel so much like there was just a camera on the floor. 
which at the end of the day is something that we are kind of trying to achieve with these solo videos. That's pretty much gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope these tips are helpful the next time you out with no friends, don't worry, it happens to all of us, and you need to film an entire project all by yourself, these things will hopefully help you. Remember to be patient, it can take a little bit longer, but it's really fun to actually have everything on yourself and your responsibility to make it look nice and see if you can still create something awesome. Remember to check out Melanote so you guys can plan your videos properly and know exactly what you need to do when you're out on set. Aside from that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.